So Daniel, what, what have you been learning about, about the show or about the things you salvage during well, these seven seasons? What have I been learning? Um, well, it, you know, we pick so many different mm -hmm. kinds of things that it's a constant education every day. Mm -hmm. um, so all my days are spent pretty much just Googling and, you know, reading. So learning a lot. Yeah. Is, is there some object that you, you've learned about that that says, oh, I didn't know about this? Oh, every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah, he, literally it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it, it's funny because you get, you get into, you get into those scenarios and, and I think I know everything. And then I find, you know, I find mm -hmm. out that there's so much more history if you just, you know, study it well enough. Mm -hmm. you, you define yourself as a collector. Yes. Right, not as, not as a picker. <laughs> no, I'm also a picker. Mm -hmm. I just, I, uh, I pick separately from the guys most times. They have, you know, they go out on the road together and occasionally I go out with them, which is always really mm -hmm. fun. I really love that. But I'm definitely a collector as well, though. What would you like to collect? Um, I love to collect vintage burlesque. Mm -hmm. So anything that's vintage burlesque or sideshow or oddities, I think are always really fun. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the fascination on, on pop culture objects? Uh, that has been now for a couple of years now, you know. Yeah, it's it's a very important, it's a very important fascination. Um, it's it's funny because I'm learning that like, obviously you know in our American culture we have our you know pop culture icons, mm -hmm. and here also in Mexico there are so many great pop culture icons. So it's like there's never a shortage of pop culture icons to study, mm -hmm. and so that means that. You know, if, if people are really interested in them, then it's it's going to be a, a sought after collectible if it has their image on it or belonged to them. Mm -hmm. But it's it's also a very American thing because I'm from Argentina, and, and you know we don't collect you know bottle caps, for example. We we don't collect signs, road signs. Beanie or, babies. Exactly. <laughs> or, vintage, or vintage, I don't know, uh, soda signs. Okay. Or, it's something very of, of the American culture. It, it is, yeah, I mean, I suppose so. I've, I, I don't know in Europe, but... And, well, yeah, I, I actually... Europe is... France, they love antiques in France, mm -hmm. but they're very into modern mm -hmm. culture and, and into, like, modern furniture and mm -hmm. homes and stuff like that. But then they also keep with this very traditional... Like, if you, if you walk through a, a, a town in France, all of the houses have to look the same mm -hmm. because that's how... That's how the, the city wants it. Mm -hmm. You know, they want it to be classic and traditional French. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because they, they have both. Mm -hmm. I, I guess now nowadays with, with the success of the show, now people are you know are no longer selling things. They're trying to restore themselves. So I guess it might be harder for you to find things because they're aware of the potential, you know, asset they have in in their garage. Um. Yes and no. For, for, I'll explain. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that, that could possibly someday be true, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that enough people have en enough drive to do this. This is a very hard job. <laughs> so I, I think that either a lot of people who probably start doing it and realize how dirty and sweaty and demanding the job is. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, we'll probably just back away from doing it. And then we come in. And <laughs> you know, but it's... It, it depends. It's not for the faint of heart. Mm -hmm. What other shows are we seeing in the new season? Um, you know, in the new season, we're really trying to focus on um, really, really telling the history of the item and where it goes mm -hmm. after it leaves the shop. So that, uh, that's honestly, I think that's the main focus of the next season. We're, I mean, we're incorporating some new concepts as well, but that I think that's the one I'm most excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a burlesque dancer as well. Correct. What, what, which, which comes first, you know, the, the collector or the dancer? You know, it, it's interesting. It's, it's very hard to separate the two because burlesque is a vintage mm -hmm. form yeah. of striptease. It's a classic striptease. And so we really focus in burlesque on having those classic costuming pieces and props and fans and lingerie and stuff. And so. Um, it's important for me to be able to go out and, and find these items. And so they kind of, they go together very well because it's, it's the burlesque that keeps me picking mm -hmm. and it's the picking that keeps my burlesque looking good and, you know, fresh and, um, 
but still have that traditional feel. Mm -hmm. and, and what are what are things are you collecting from the burlesque uh, community? You know, uh, pasties, uh, dresses, yeah. well, uh, mm -hmm. signs. Oh well, all of it. Anything mm -hmm. I can get my hands on that's burlesque related, I will I will buy. Mm -hmm. um, Music maybe. Yeah, no, definitely. I have tons of old standards and burlesque music. Uh, but I think um, the things that I love to collect the most are vintage pasties, g-strings, um, like from from famous burlesque dancers. Uh, any 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 costuming pieces or jewelry, fans, any any uh, even media like the the newspapers mm -hmm. with tempest storm splashed across the front, or you know the the old movies with Betty Page, and so mm -hmm. I like all of that stuff. I collect all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, does Burlesque does have, have a targeted audience or are there are you know, people from everywhere that come? You know, it's interesting because I thought for sure we would kind of have a, a younger male audience when, mm -hmm. like, when I started doing it eight mm -hmm. years ago. And as it turns out, we really have a, a very mature audience and a lot of young women that, are, that really would like to express themselves but, and feel sexy and sensual but don't necessarily want to dance at a strip club, mm -hmm. but they want to have this artistic expression of who they are. And so we're really bringing in a lot of creative young ladies, um, which is great, but there, there's also a lot of, it's, uh, yeah, every, I don't really know many people who don't like burlesque. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's got all the good stuff, yes, right? It it's is. like pizza, all pizza is good. Exactly. Some's better than others, but it's all good. And the last question is, uh, w why is it important to make a documentary about Tempest Storm for you? You know, the reason that I decided, well, first of all, my, my friends Caitlin and Amisha are the ones mm -hmm. who started this mm -hmm. project um, about Tempest Storm. They came to me because they knew that I was a big fan of hers, mm -hmm. and um, and I just I, I jumped on it right away because it's really important for me to be able to tell the history of the art that I love. And Tempest is one of the icons that, she's one of the most famous icons in burlesque history. So uh, we're really blessed to even have her attention. Um, we, we just, we're, we're gonna take as much of her attention as we possibly can and try to do her justice mm -hmm. and make sure that her story is, is heard because it's a very, very interesting one. Okay, well, thank you very much and yes, good luck with everything. You. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.